when I woke up, the sun had started blessing the valley. For a moment, I thought we had overslept. But to my surprise, it was only 5.30 in the morning. With the soul filled with the renewed nomadic fervor, it was time to hit the road again. Soon we reached Sumdo, the first village in the Spiti region of Lahul Spiti. The first place on my itinerary was Gyu Monastery. About 3 kilometers from Sumdo, a road diverges towards the right from the main road that takes you to Gyu village. a hamlet nestled in the palm of the Himalayas. Like many villages in the region, it is located just a few kilometers from the India-China border. It is known for the 600-year-old, well-preserved mummy of the Buddhist monk, Sangha Tenzin. Currently, it is kept in a small temple next to the main monastery, due to the renovation work in the main monastery. After a few moments of peace, it was time to continue the journey. As we reached the main road, something unexpected happened. An army commander signaled us to stop. He told us to tell all the soldiers we meet on the way to be alert. Good heavens, a coded message I thought. So without wasting any time, I stepped on the gas. We were able to reach only two soldiers who were already on alert. Soon, I saw some military cars coming from behind. I let them go ahead. Surely the mission was accomplished. More or less. Tabu village was next on my list. But just before Tabu, I saw a statue next to a Lari village. Curiosity got the better of me. It was a short uphill trek, and only after reaching halfway, we realized that there was a link road to the statue. The statue is of Guru Padmasambhava, also known as Guru Rinpoche, who was instrumental in spreading Tantric Buddhism to Bhutan and Tibet in the 8th century.
from here, you also get the bird's eye view of the Tabo village. Tabo, a village on the left bank of the Spiti river, is home to a monastery of the same name, believed to be the oldest Buddhist monastery in the world. Apart from its unique architecture, it is known for its exquisite collection of Thangka paintings, manuscripts, well-preserved sculptures, frescoes and murals depicting the tales from the Buddhist pantheon. A small window on the ceiling illuminates the inner temple of the main temple complex. There is a Buddha statue in front of the wall opposite the entrance to the inner temple and the other walls are embellished with colorful frescoes and paintings of various Buddha incarnations. The temple complex also has many stupas and other temples, such as the Golden Temple, the Bodhisattva Temple, the Temple of Drumton, etc. On the hill opposite the village are caves that were used by monks for meditation. And because of the semblance between Tabo Caves and the Ajanta Caves in Maharashtra, Tabo has earned the sobriquet, Ajanta of the Himalayas. There are a few gift shops in the temple premises, from where I bought some souvenirs. And after having brunch, it was time to leave for the next destination. Dhankar, a village around 30 kilometers from Tabo. For me, Dhankar is the soul of Spiti, a beautiful village situated on a crescent-shaped slope of a hill with houses of the unique style that is common in the region, some even on the edge of a cliff. It has a monastery and a fort overlooking the entire valley. From here, you can see the Parvati river merging with the Spiti river in the west and Mount Manirang standing tall in the southeast. We reached Dhankar around 4 in the evening. We could have gone for the trek to Dhankar Lake, but it would have been an arduous journey as it was still very hot there. I had a reservation at a homestay in Dhankar, owned by a lovely couple, Sonam and Tenzin. Their hospitality was heartwarming. After settling down, we were offered Seabuck Thorn Tea, a regional drink made from the hand picked Seabuck Thorns from the region in and around the Rangrik village. While talking to them, I came to know that they own the oldest house in the village and they happily invited us to visit it. A house at least 300 years old, right on the edge of the cliff. It has always intrigued me how the people in this region survive. The harsh landscape may have hardened them physically, but their souls are the epitome of benevolence. Here, everything starts with Jule and ends with Jule. Jule is not just a word in Spiti, it is the quintessence of Spiti. Apart from Jule, I learned two new words this time Ajo and Ache. 
in the local dialect it means brother and sister after spending some time with ajo sonam we went back to our room it was soon time for dinner and ajay tenzin served us delicious thentok and timok with vegetables and finally it was time to dive into the world of dreams for an adventurous day was waiting for us